Hello, welcome to Knitter Matters. This is season three, episode eight. Thank you so much for joining me, whether you're watching live or the replays later. I really do appreciate you being here. Um, I'm Cheryl Lampard. I'm an image consultant. My company is Star Matters International. And throughout my life, my passions have been sewing and knitting. And knitting in particular is the thing I do every day. It's, it's, it's my relaxation, it's my therapy. Um, and I know it is for many of you. I also am a Craft a Yarn Council Certified Knitting Instructor. Um, I also was the proud owner of a yarn store in Brighton, England. And one of the great joys of having a yarn store is that you get to be able to teach people to knit. Um, I loved doing it then. I love it even more now, um, especially through the, um, the platforms of social media because it can reach more people. So welcome, welcome. Um, if you've watched this before, you, you might know that we have various things going on in the background and I must just show you my new addition to the studio. This is Prue from Peru. This gorgeous alpaca <laughs> was given to me as a birthday present last week by my husband. So it's Prue from Peru um, and she's, she's just gorgeous. And you'll also see a couple of other things. We have Cutlet here, uh, two new sheep. Uh, Billy and Connolly and uh, McDougall, the big ram at the back. So I'm building up quite a lovely collection <laughs> of nice sheepy things and all things yarn fibre. Anyway, I am going to ask the camera to move and we'll we're get straight in. Today is all about selvage solutions. So I will ask the camera to just pan to the worktop. So just as a little recap, um, in textile and garment making, selvages are the side edges of a fabric that's, and they're woven in a way to keep it from unraveling or fraying. Literally, selvage means self edges. In knitting, a selvage is an edge that's formed by changing the stitch pattern at the beginning and end of each rose, regardless of the shape. Um, on this shawl, you can see that it's a curvy edge and I've done a different stitch along here to keep this edge nice and firm and uh, stabilizes it. Now, we often use uh, different selvage, selvages if we're going to seam. If, and sometimes we, we, we don't need to worry too much about it. I mean, we should always worry about selvages, but we don't have to do anything fancy if it's going to be enclosed in a seam. We just want it to work and we just want it to hold the seam. So um, when we sew it up, it's not a problem. And I did, uh, oh, I see Tara has joined us. Uh, thank you for joining us, Tara. I will try and say hello to you as your names pop up, pop up, but sometimes I can't see them quickly enough and then they disappear off the page. But uh, even if I don't say hello to you, you are very welcome. So selvage is actually, there's two spellings of selvage, S-E-L-V-A-G-E, -E, which is the French spelling and it tends to be used more in the US or selvage, S-E-L-V-E-D-G-E. -E. That's the English and that's the rag trade spelling. I'm going to use that second spelling for this episode, Selvage, uh, to distinguish it from when we did season two, episode 16, which was about different selvage stitches. And in that episode, I demonstrated various options, including several uh, that are good for later seaming. But if your project has exposed edges, or unfinished edges, um, say on a scarf, a wrap, as this one does, uh, or even a slit seam at the hemline, maybe it's a top, a sweater, or a tunic, something like that, whatever it is, if you have an exposed edge, you probably need a more finished looking selvage. So I'm gonna show you a few today, and the first one is very simple. We have done this one before actually, but it's worth showing you again. This one is a slip stitch, chain selvage and it's not one I would want to use if I was going to be sewing up because it's actually quite each of these chains takes up two rows but it, it does make quite a nice finished edge this I think I've used a needle here I did this very quickly today so it's not the best gauge on it but I wanted you to see how this forms and I'll show you how to do this because it can work very nicely I've actually done it on 
reversible skulls where you've got a pattern that can see you could look at from both sides and it, it's really quite effective on the edge of a scarf something like that it's very simple and what you do with your yarn at the back so my yarn is at the back of the work we're going to be doing a lot of yarn forwards and lot yarn backs today you slip the first stitch purl wise then you work to the end and I'll do this very quickly without trying to bang the microphone 